Uh, first, to begin with, it's a privilege to have the experience of looking at Ragi. For me, and looking at Gautam, after long years, in 2013, I saw his film, Shunno Anko, which means, perhaps means empty figures in an empty auditorium in Nandan, Kolkata. Do you remember that, Gautam? And after Shunno Anko, this is a rare experience for me, particularly as an Indian, as a Bangali, as a Bengal, person from Bengal, as a friend of Gautam Ghosh. It's a refreshing thing because I'm looking at him that despite globalization and neoliberal attitude on the part of Indian filmmakers, film, despite the glossy and synthetic platforms that is being regularly offered by the Indian filmmakers, Gautam has gone back to his essence, to his core, to his gold, golden hungry autumn days. I'm really indebted to a person who made Boatman on the river Padma, who made Par across the river, who made Antar Joli Jastra. Red light camera reported ahead. This is a kind of encounter with poverty. The film, this is not a question of poverty alone. This is a question of exploring a kind of emptiness that has been reigning in India. It's a kind of revoking the aesthetics of hunger, things like that, which was there in the 1970s, the kind of imperfect cinema and a kind of third cinema, which speaks more of a national condition than of the media, than of the art medium itself. It is not confined. It is not limited within do the domain. It is not that claustrophobic, it opens out. And what do we see when Gautam's protagonist says that not Salman Khan, you must remember Birsa. I understand this is the voice to which third world speaks. The third world tried to spoke, speak like that at least 50 years ago. And now one of the rare personality from our world who has not forgotten his vouch is Gautam, our friend. I acknowledge his contribution that Bisha Munda, a tribal hero, should be our icon and not Salman Khan, the glossy, plastic presence in the on the Bollywood screen. And when he speaks of, when he speaks of a float, I'm reminded both of Shotoditra, the centenary, he used fruit in Pathet Pachali, in Aparajito, and in Apu Shankar, the family of Apu, fruit being the least expensive Indian musical instrument. He was in the habit of using fruit while depicting rural environment and perhaps uh, abject poverty in a city environment. And Gautam too took up the cause of fruit and his location, Netarhat, I must say, it's a good old reminder to the Opu Shankar days. Am I not right, Gautam? Opu Shankar, in Opu Shankar, uh, Shottaritra used this location. And perhaps we can also remember the experiences of Ajantri when Riti Ghatok took up the cause of the tribals. And he, like a true courageous, lonely, solitary figure in Indian cinema, is taking up the cause of the wayfarers. They're nowhere. They belong to nowhere. Practically, the ruling class erases them out. And I'm really, till, uh, I'm really grateful that Gautam could invent them out, out of from nothingness. They return to the Indian skin. And if you look at the photography of the film, Gautam himself being a very good photographer. He belongs to the genre of that cinema legacy where the director practically acted as a cinematographer, like say Orson Welles in Citizen Kane, say, uh, say 
Ajay Kaur in Bangla cinema, Gautam would remember. Like, this low light photograph, which is typical of him, which is signature of him, early morning photography, and extreme uh, low light photography during nights or late evenings. It's splendid. Only for the photography you can see the film. Though I feel a bit shaken because this film is made, not made for OTT platform or like this computer screen. Because you have so much long take, subject to camera distances, can make deliberately longer. And if you look at it, these long shots and long takes cannot be interpreted, cannot be justified properly if you present them on the TV screen or on the OTT platform. You require re a real auditorium, a real location to appreciate that. I must say that Gautam, instead of presenting a chocolate rack beauty, he went inside the essence of Indian civilization and wanted to prove to us that the subalterns that the subalterns and the poor have the right to live. They can share their grief and pleasure, go together. And out of silence, they can scream. And this screaming is very important for our civilization. This is an artist's represent, a responsibility to invent this screaming when everything has been muted.